Oh no, hipsters! This week on Backward Compatible, Jim, Doc, and Chris are joined by Brian McKittrick to discuss their most anticipated games of 2016. Plus, impressions of the new Need for Speed, Downwell, and John Romero's recently released Doom One. The BackwardCompatible.com podcast starts right now. Hello, Backward Compatible listeners, and welcome to episode number 56 of the BackwardCompatible.com podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm joined tonight by Jim. Hey, I'm Jim, and I'm here. And Doc. Hey, everybody. And we're joined once again by Brian McKittrick. I am freezing to death. Who? <laughs> Brian McKittrick. Who's, I don't know him. Who, who is freezing to death? You probably remember Brian from uh, various episodes of Roll With It. Uh, sometimes he does play our GM. Yep. The uh, last one was uh, Goblin Quest for Halloween. Correct, and I actually mentioned that last week is uh, probably my favorite backward compatible experience from last year. That's ah, true. Actually. So I yeah. did. I'm looking forward to the, the next one. I just refer to you as the skinny guy who needs to fatten up <laughs> because you're too cold. Hey, we're geeks, you know. Yeah, there you go. We're large don't and in charge. Body shame. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's that's body I point, shaming. I didn't point on it like your red beard or anything <laughs> like that. And our media topic of discussion for today is going to be a look forward to 2016. Um, last week we did our year in review of 2015, and tonight we are going to be talking about which games are coming out in 2016 that we are looking forward to. But without further ado, let's get right into the mosh. Get ready for the butt mosh, where the crew jumps in on the video games they've been rocking lately. Uh, I guess I'm going to start just real quick, because that was short mosh, because uh, it's going to build off of what I talked about last week. Um, I've been playing exclusively pretty much Witcher 3. I've com- I'm completely hooked on the game now. I think it's one of those games where it takes you um, a few hours to really get into it, but once you do, uh, it really grabbed onto me. So, well, that's encouraging, because when I tried playing it, um, I was like maybe an hour or two into uh-huh. it, and I hadn't really like felt the urge to keep going. Yeah, I felt the same way, honestly, when I first started it, and that was... I, where, when I had quit it to to play Metal Gear Solid Five when it mm-hmm. came out, and I didn't really feel like it was a big loss, I was enjoying it somewhat. But mm-hmm. I felt there was a lot more to offer. But I didn't really feel like it had, you know, sucked me in. But uh, after getting maybe about in around level like um, six, seven, around the time that I started talking about it from last week, mm-hmm. I I really am hooked now. Now I'm up to I think I'm at, at level seventeen, I believe, and. Um, almost done with the second area it seems like there's three main areas mm-hmm. and so i'm almost done with the second the second big chunk and about to enter the, the third big chunk mm-hmm. and i'm really just hanging out in the second area trying to finish all these quests many of them are gray quests because i've gotten so far ahead in, in xp mm-hmm. i'm literally just doing the quests i'm interested in the, in the story from side quests that's how much i'm into the game yes nice. um but yeah i love it the, the combat system is is fantastic i'm still learning new moves and new tricks in combat which i think is is brilliant because I, I i honestly i tried to find out how many hours i played i couldn't figure out how to do it um but i'm sure i've got to be at least at 50 hours now um and i don't have a lot of free time to play games but that's the game i go to now nice at least for a while i'll probably be done with it by the time we have our next we probably we meet next wow um, okay, so, uh, Chris, what have you been playing? So I haven't had much time for gaming lately, but I've been able to sneak in a bit of the new Need for Speed um, I got as a Christmas gift. Uh, fortunately, I was told it was not full price. Mm. Um, what what system is that on? Uh, that I'm, you're playing? I'm playing it on PS4. PS4? Um, and it's very pretty. Um, it's running on the Frostbite engine, um, and they have... Each area, it seems like there's no day-night cycle, but each area that you can kind of drive into has its own look and feel. Um, and so most of the town is nighttime, and especially the part where you start off, it's uh, it seems like it's recently rained if it's not actually raining. Mm-hmm. And so all the streets are very wet, so you get lots of nice reflections in the street lights and that sort of stuff. So very pretty in that way. Um, and then there's one area where you kind of go up into the mountains, and you can actually see um, the city off in the distance, and the sun seems to be coming up or peeking out from behind the clouds. But then oddly, you go through a tunnel, and it's nighttime again. <laughs> so it's a little bit weird. <laughs> in that way but it's more of the atmosphere Tunnel of um, 
It reminds me a lot of the old Need for Speed Underground. Um, it's about street racing. Most of the time it's nighttime. Um, it's the same way in Underground. And you're uh, trying to, you know, collect new cars. You're trying to mod cars. You can actually do... Um, a, it's got a pretty robust um, custom wrap designer um, to add decals and paint jobs and stuff like that to your car. Hmm. Um, so if you want to, you can actually get really creative and have a really neat design on your vehicle. You, can you pick... I mean, I really haven't played much of the series. Mm -hmm. Um can you pick what car you're driving, soup, like, soup it up, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, you start with one of three starter cars, and then you can soup it up. Um, it's not it's not like the Gearheads game, where you're going to like be going into like very specific parts and choosing your brand and stuff like that. It's more like there are different grades. And then sometimes you'll have some, like two, two parts of the same grade um, that you know one maybe gives you better top speed, but one gives you better acceleration, that sort of thing. Um, and then there are some things you can do, actually, which I think is more useful for, you know, the fact that it is just a game about racing. It's more about the feel and not so much just about, like, fine-tuning your car, um, is that you can tune the handling quite a bit. Um, so you can change, like, you know, your tire pressure and all this different stuff in order to adjust the handling. So you can kind of... And if you don't want to get into, into that much detail, you can actually... Um, there's a slider that takes you from balanced to drift to grip. Um, so you can sort of choose your style based on that, and mm. it will sort of auto-adjust everything that needs to be adjusted to get you there. There. <laughs> Um, and so it's interesting. I tend to prefer driving when I'm racing with kind of a balanced thing because I like drifting a bit, but I also don't like to lose control. Uh, but there are some events when actually the objective is to score a lot of points with drifting and with sort of doing stylistic stuff. Hmm. In those cases, it's good to switch more to the drifty control um, in order to um, let your car slide around more and have like nice long drifts. Uh, so it's a it's an interesting game overall. Um, the narrative, which is of course not why you go to a Need for Speed game, is really corny. Um, it's got lots, lots of uh, first person. It, it actually even has a story. Yeah. I didn't even think it would. Yeah, it's got it's got okay. a lot of. Um, actually, in some ways, the narrative structure is interesting because you keep you go down these like various paths and you can kind of choose the order in which you do different missions. And so you can kind of like get would, all the way through one path before you address the others. Well, hold on, this is a driving game, so let's yes. call them roads. Okay, you go down various <laughs> roads. various roads. Yes, um, and so they're like different. When you hit a fork <laughs> in the road. Yeah, they're, you have they're, to choose which direction to travel. There are five different styles of driving. Um, one's called speed. One's called drift. Um, I think that one's also just called style. Uh, crew, um, outlaw, and build. Which build is kind of like you know the customization of your car. And so different things that you do as you're driving contribute to each of those different things. And so you can um, also pursue storylines are kind of related to those. Um, and so that's that's kind of interesting, but the the cutscenes for the most part are first person full motion video, and um, as was pointed out in a review, it's actually kind of amusing. Um, there's a lot of first person fist bumping that happens. <laughs> um, so you you definitely wow. don't come to this game for the story, but it's a it's an interesting um, game. It's a solid racer. But full um, motion video. So you mean actual like recording live actors? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's interesting. Odd. <laughs> but it kind of reminds me of the old CD ROM days. I know. That's <laughs> what I was thinking too. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. That's that's cool though. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really a huge racing fan, but uh, I have heard a lot of good things about that series from people that are. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's it's got cool. a good it's got the t standard Need for Speed blend between simulationist and arcade, um, and so it's a good solid racing game. Cool. Awesome. Um, Doc, what have you been playing lately? Honestly, I was kind of disappointed with the PS Plus uh, download options for both. PS3 and oh, PS4 this, this I'm month. like that several months, but go ahead. Yeah, so um, usually there's some kind of weird, quirky game that uh -huh. you know, I download and I, I play a little bit, but uh, I've just spent the time that I've had in uh, in Fallout 4. Hmm. So you've been playing more. In, uh, no, have you, you've beaten the game, right? You're just kind of... Oh, no. Oh, you haven't beaten it yet? No, no. Oh, okay. Well, I thought maybe you had beaten it and you went back to go do some extra side quests or something. Nope. In fact, I'm not even sure what my next mainline quest is. Are you... Because last time we talked, um, you said you were having fun kind of going around, exploring, oh, yeah. doing a whole bunch of stuff. So you're not really that interested in the mainline quest or finishing I, it? Up? I have almost zero interest in finishing the game. So it's essentially like every other Bethesda game where you just don't really care about the mainline quest Honestly, for the most part? I, I, I'll give you that. Um, yeah, in, in this case, I mean, I, I do eventually want to do it, yeah, but I'm, right. I'm really in no rush to do it. Um, right now I have my own personal quest, which is to find as many... Um, uh, suits of armor as I possibly can, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, without actually befriending the Brotherhood because I hate those guys. <laughs> can you? Go right now I have six. Can you destroy all the Brotherhood? Like kill all of them? So there's no no. 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 That would be great though. <laughs> it's not like Fallout New Vegas where you literally can win the game by killing everyone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, Fallout New Vegas had a lot of extra options, but let's not go into yeah. that. Sorry, uh, let's. Um, so, sorry, you go yeah, ahead. Just, just to, to, I don't know, focus on one, one nice little mm -hmm. thing. Um, the most of the heroes of the named characters actually can't die. 
Um, your companions can't die. And so what they do is they just crouch down and are out of the fight. And then when the fight's over, they'll stand back up. Oh, that's so, cheating. I know I, it I is. Think, I think they did it because they would know that people would just auto or would just load the last save anyway. That's exactly right. Well, what, so, what, is that, what is that people would do that? That's kind of... <laughs> I mean, like, I didn't do it because I actually kind of enjoyed the emergent story that came from having right. a companion die. And mm-hmm. I would remember, like, oh, they died when we were trying to do this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think they just figured well, that... And, and I, I had this weird moment. Um, my, my companion the whole time has been Piper. Um, mm-hmm. To the point where I actually, um, spoiler alert, gave uh, gave her my dead wife's wedding ring. So I just consider us to be married now. <laughs> and so we wandered the wasteland, married, and, uh, you know. The it, wedding it, ring was not on your wife's finger at the time. Well, no. No. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I had removed it. Okay. Is there actually like a dialogue thing that goes with that, or is it just literally just no, stuck in inventory? No, I was hoping there inventory? would be. I okay. stuck it in her inventory and equipped it. Uh-huh. Uh, but I crouched when I did it. Uh-huh. So that was, that, was, that was pretty romantic, I thought. So it's not. it doesn't let you actually... It, it doesn't have like Skyrim style that. marriage. No, no okay. uh, at least not that I've found. And, mm-hmm. and it's a shame too because there is a there is a priest of mm-hmm. the Church of Uni- Unified Love or something. I don't know. Huh. And so I, I actually went there with her to be like, we want to get married. Mm-hmm. There was no dialogue option for me. Uh, so I was actually kind of disappointed about that. But um, you know, I, I don't I don't need their mm-hmm. um, their scripts <laughs> yeah. and their dialogue to be able and to have fun. Son, what's and now on? that you <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, now that you mention it with with the um, companion sign, the way that the AI works in a lot of you know, those Bethesda games, you probably wouldn't really want them to have permanent death because a lot of it wouldn't really be your fault. Right. The companion would just kind of do something that you necess- you didn't want it to do Actually, and then dies and you get that's all That's a perfect off example because and- yesterday I was up on yeah. this terrace. She was up there with me. We were shooting down into this sort of pit and mm. killing people from really far away and being snipers and it was really fun and then she got the idea that it would be even more fun if she jumped down. And so... <laughs> well, to I be just- fair, that probably was fun for a couple of <laughs> minutes. <laughs> it probably was for like a millisecond and, and, and so I see my... Um, in-game wife jumping <laughs> off of this three-story building and then she goes, ow, my leg! <laughs> it's like, I want out of this marriage! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> and it was great, too, because she just launches right in front of my camera and I'm like, what? No, don't just go down there! I have to go down there! Uh, but... But did can, she land? Did she actually land right in front of you? Like no, first she, person she landed. Wise? No, no, she landed down three stories down below me. Oh, oh okay. I and, thought it was like you're just sitting there. You turn around. And yeah. Just so like I had to finish the fight by myself, mm-hmm. which I did. Um, I just you know kind of lobbed a uh, a fat man down there, and it was done. Went back in the door, and as soon as I went back in the door, she was behind me, and she was fine. So, mm-hmm. in that sense, you know there there's some game breaking mechanics, mm-hmm. but in another sense, it's never going to break the story. I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine with that conceit. Mm. So, Brian, what have you been playing? Um, well, I started a new job, don't have a lot of time to play games, and the games I got for Christmas were really, really short, or I haven't spent a lot of time with. Uh, the one I've spent the most time with is Downwell, which you can get for $2. You have gun boots, and you're going down a well. Oh, fun. Nice. What system is this on? PC? PC? Okay. I, I assume there's also enough of a recoil that slows you down as you're falling. Yes, you, you, yeah, but you have ammo. Okay. This and is a, like an action platformer type? Yeah, okay. and you only reload when you land on uh, the ground. Mm. So you need to bounce from enemy. You can stomp on enemies as well. Mm. Okay. But send them in, the red enemies hurt, white enemies you could stop. Mm. And so the, the trick is getting a long enough combo to get a huge bonus. Interesting. Nice. Cool. So it's like a sort of arcade style? A, it's kind of a roguelike too, yeah. So, All right, cool, interesting. So this this game you you're playing called Job. Um, what is it like? Is it like the the Sims but analog edition? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, I got it. The, the, but the, I, the, I get uh, in-game rewards that are actual money. Wow, that's pretty cool. The, the lifelong cool. uh, role-playing game professionalism. Oh yeah. no, I, I've been staying away from that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm going for PhD. The sequel next. <laughs> <laughs> this is the gaming meta news and commentary about the games industry and gamer culture. About a week and a half ago, uh, John Romero, who was the designer of the original Doom, um, he actually released a new Doom wad, which uh, for the first time, I believe it was this, they uh, said it was his first contribution to Doom in 21 years, I think they were saying. Now, for the uninitiated, what is a wad? Oh, uh, it's... And how do you spell that? W-A-D. Mm-hmm. It was basically just like a map, mm-hmm. a Doom map file. Okay. Um, and they were just called wads because the file was whatever the name was, dot wad, W-A-D. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Um, that's all it was. So, uh, but this was this was a new uh, wad for Doom, and one of the cool things about the original Doom is that people are still creating new mods for it, new new wads for. Now, it. when you say original Doom, you're talking 1992, four, three. Or six? Yeah, it was like 93, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was an early 90s game, um, and yeah, I am talking about the original Doom. Wow. So I uh, see. I played that mostly in college. I mean, I know it came out earlier than that, but. Um, for for me, that was something that my roommate and I sat around and did, 
uh, playing these these Doom mods. I mean, I, I remember one that was like The Simpsons, and one that was a shopping mall, and all these yeah, different. Yeah, there were there were people that went and and took it in that direction where they tried to sort of like make things from other properties. The ones that I liked were people that actually tried to create a level within Doom sure. using the Doom assets, and that's what this was. And the interesting thing about this was was also the the reactions from other people. But just to give a little bit of an in, of insight, since I did play it. Um, well, first of all, he calls it, uh, he named the WAD um, E1M8B, and if you, that sounds familiar, oh, yeah. E1M8 was the name of the very first mission in Doom. Yeah, it was. So it was kind of interesting that he just called it B, um, and that was kind of the name, that's the name of the WAD. He posted it originally on Twitter and with a link to his Dropbox so that anyone could download it. That's cool. So that's kind of how I found it. I just kind of, because I actually follow him on Twitter, I saw it there. I mm-hmm. thought it was really neat. Um, but basically, it's it's, I wouldn't really even say it's a... This is a super hard level, or this is a um, level that has a special theme. It just comes across as this is a Doom level from someone that knows how to use the tool set. Mm-hmm. And it's just trying to make a uh, fast-paced, intense experience, which is what Doom is. So it's a just, really hard tool set to use, too. Yeah. I remember that. Well, But yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's basically just this is a new Doom level. It's, mm-hmm. it's very large for a Doom level. There's a lot of detail in the environment. I don't know how long... I think, if I remember correctly, he said he had been working on it for a couple of months. So he did put some time into it to actually try to make... You know, give it a lot of detail. It wasn't just, let's just block out an area and put enemies in it. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot to it. And um, you kind of, as you go through the level, there's uh, actually... I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's difficult to navigate, but even if you kind of know where you're going because of the size of the level, it can probably take you about anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes, even if you know where, how to get through it. Right. So for a Doom level, for Doom 1, that's actually a pretty big level. Um, yeah, that is big. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, interestingly, at the very end, you face off against... You have a similar space as to the very end of that original E1 um, M8 mission, mm-hmm. where you have the two barons of hell that come out of the little you know, platforms. Yeah, oh, yeah. So it's a similar space, although it takes place in this darker, sort of a darker environment. It's a little bit scarier, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So it's a very um, uh, somewhat nostalgic bent to it, and yet it was an all-new level. Nice. I think it kind of succeeded on both areas. I hadn't played the original Doom in a while. I know I talked recently about going back and playing um, Doom 2. But, uh, yeah, I hadn't gone back and, and also playing Doom on, Doom uh, multiplayer. But, uh, yeah, I hadn't played uh, original Doom levels in um, at least a couple of years. So mm-hmm. it, was very, it was interesting to kind of get back in it and have a new, ex- a new experience that felt both new and nostalgic at the same time. That's really cool. This is Back Talk, where someone shares their thoughts on a previous discussion they missed. Chris, I know that you were not here last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you decided to skip. <laughs> you played hooky, but uh, I, I believe that you I did. I gave him 10 demerits. It's okay. There you go. I believe that you did actually <laughs> Minus listen 50 to... Minus 50 BKP. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh, God. <laughs> this reminded me so much of it. Um, Flashbacks. Yeah, I thought so <laughs> Like Vietnam flashbacks. <laughs> You're flashbacks. not that old. Flashbacks. No, no, but it's just close enough. Um, uh, but yeah, so I mean, I, w- I wasn't here for the year in review, unfortunately. Um, I just wanted to quickly name my game of the year. Um, and we agreed ahead of time that if we had any duplicates, we were going to see if we can find another one in order to um, like uh, you know, have a little bit more variety between the three of us. So I did, uh, like your honorable mentions, Jim, uh, both uh, Mario Maker and the, your game of the year, um, Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm-hmm. Um, my game of the year, if it wasn't Metal Gear Solid Five, I think was Tales from the Borderlands. Um, I think, as I've said before on the podcast, I won't go into too much detail with it. I think it's one of Telltale's best games so far, at least that I've played. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of fun, really captured the Borderlands spirit while still doing a really great job of taking what is essentially just a shoot and loot and turning it into a narrative game. Um, so I had a lot of fun with it. It was very funny. Um, looked forward a ton to every new release. Um, I think it was just a really solid game overall. And so um, as far as the thing that I had the most fun with in 2015... Um, if it wasn't going to be Metal Gear Solid Five, it was probably Tales from the Borderlands. So that's my game of the year. Nice. Cool. I'm curious what Brian's would have been. I don't usually put things on pedestals. Um, I know. That's why I'm curious. I don't have any faith in Game of the Years because so many websites and stuff have given that award to her story, which I find repulsive. Hmm. Yeah, I, oh, I yeah. wouldn't really even consider it a game, to be honest with you, as a collect. It's an interesting experience, but I wouldn't really consider it a game. Yeah, and it's just another evidence of Sam Barlow's twist in story writing, mm-hmm. which is the same thing every time. But this isn't <laughs> about someone else's game of the year. This is about your game of the year. You think it's a terrible. <laughs> that doesn't matter what Trust I Trust me, Jim has about a million opinions. I do. They're all wrong, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I had to I pick, it'd either be Undertale or Crypt of the Necrodancer. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Crypt yeah. the Neck Dancer. Nice. Yeah. Crypt the Neck Dancer? <laughs> I never played this Crypt game. of the Necro Dancer. Oh. I never played this it's game. A, it's a rhythm-based roguelike. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Which he has talked about before on the podcast. Yes, mm-hmm. he has. Grab your salt shakers, because it's time for some reckless speculation. Arcs used to engage with rumors, hearsay, and all sorts of crazy theories. Okay, right before we start our topic on anticipated games of 2016, mm-hmm. um, I would like to kind of have a little bit of reckless speculation, you know, home edition here, where we kind of try to guess what we think the most anticipated game is of, of someone else here. Without okay. actually looking at the list, we're going to guess, and I think it um, possibly we can kind of go around, but I'm going to go through and just, we can go through and just kind of guess. I've okay. totally got yours. Dot, go. Yeah, you, you, you are uh, most anticipating The Legend of Zelda. Okay, that's Doc's guess. That's my guess for Jim. My guess for Jim is the new Fire Emblem game. I'm going to say Persona 5. Oh, that's a good one. These are all good guesses. Yeah. Um, okay, so... I think they're all wrong, honestly. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what, is, what is the answer for you? Oh, is it Numenera? No, uh, uh, honestly, right now it's Doom. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm in really, oh, the looking, new Doom? I'm really yeah. looking forward to the new Doom. That makes sense. Uh, I will say Legend of Zelda, which is something that I'll talk about when we get to our most anticipated games. Mm-hmm. It would be my most anticipated. I don't think it's coming in 2016. Oh, you think it's going to be 2017? I think it's going to be pushed. Yeah, I, we I, talked a little bit about that last right, week. Right. I firmly believe it will be pushed. I will be shocked if it comes out in 2016. That being said, um, it is my most anticipated game if it were to come out this year. I just don't think it will. Awesome. So that's why I'm eliminating it. All right. I'll take the asterisk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do Chris. Okay. Let's do Chris. Okay. Um... I think I'm going to say Persona 5 for Chris, honestly. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was going to say before he even said it. So <laughs> I was going to say XCOM 2. Oh, oh that's a good, good guess. Uh, all three are on my list. Um, it's very close, but probably Persona 5 is the number one right now. Yeah, oh, yeah there we go. Yeah. So, I'm looking forward to that one too, by the way. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, okay, let's do uh, Brian. Just yeah, let's do Brian. Over Brian. <sighs> Undertale 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> no, there isn't one. There isn't one. <laughs> um, no Man's Sky. Nah, I don't think so. There's no, there's no way. Um, I don't have a PS4. Uh, hmm. Is it exclusive? I think so. It, it's going to be something. Yeah, it is actually. Huh. Uh, it's going to be something weird. Like it's going to be weird. Cuphead. It's <laughs> uh, an interesting choice. That's hmm. the one that's done entirely in the 19th. Oh yeah, no, that one. I thought you were just making something up. Yeah, no, it is, no. it is a thing. <laughs> do we have a, do we have a new. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there some prominent roguelike that's coming out in 2016? I can't think of one. That's true. Ryan's a big roguelike guy. Darkest mm. Dungeon's got officially released. Yeah, you know, there's there's a second one coming out. Darkest Dungeon 2. Yeah. Oh. I'd look at my list, but that would be cheating. I don't know. I'm going to guess, and this is probably not true. I'm just going to throw it out there. Friday the 13th, the game. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> I'm going to go with Oxenfree. Hmm? No, no, none of them. The thing is, I don't really have a, a top one that I'm expecting, because I don't look forward to games. That's true. No, he okay. doesn't put them on pedestals. Fair enough. And no I pedestals. I just went, let games happen, and I'm like, oh, that looks cool. I'll wait till it's okay. on sale. Mm-hmm. What game do you put on a footstool for 2016? <laughs> well, Cuphead looks interesting. Okay. Oh, Cuphead! He's but I Cuphead. don't think I'm going to get it on release. Um, okay, so let's do Doc then. Um, I am going to say that Horizon Zero Dawn, I think it's called. Is that the name of it? That's, yeah. that's the name of the game, though, right? Horizon Zero Dawn? That is a game. Or Dawn Zero, or... That's, what I'm, that's my guess. Which one are you talking about? Is, oh, wait. It's I, called Horizon Zero Dawn. It's the one with, like, the, the tribal girl with, like, that fights the robots. The hunting and machines. The, yeah, and the hunting. Okay. Yeah. I just really remembered what game is on the list that I am actually looking for, but I don't have a PS4. Oh, yeah. which game? Uh, Unraveled. Oh, yeah. Oh. The, the ball of yarn guy who... Right. His name right. is Yarny. Yeah. <laughs> Yarny? And the E3 presentation was very heartfelt, and that's what's oh. me. Oh. <laughs> What is your guess, uh, Chris, for, for Doc? Um, I gave it, mine. I, I had two choices, and I, I picked one of them. Is it The Last Guardian, the one with the giant creature from Ico? That is the name of that game, yes. Yeah, that, that one. Well, the, the first two I would have said from Team Ico. So, uh, uh, no Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. Mm. All, if it ever comes out. <laughs> all three of those are on my list. Okay. You're absolutely right. Um, and I was kind of trolling you whenever I said I didn't know what the name of it was. Mm. because um, Was I right? Yeah, you're absolutely oh, right. Oh, <laughs> Yeah! Um, there we go. Yeah, I, I honestly think that... <laughs> I got that, two. I think that Horizon Zero Dawn is I got, just... I got Brian's if Undertale 2 was a thing. No, I changed it. It was Unraveled then. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I remember you showing me that one, the one that Jim Yeah, said. I showed you a couple of trailers, um, but... I didn't know if that was your most anticipated. Though. Um, it, it has become, quickly become it, because I, I've mm. watched a lot of other footage that's available. There's mm. only three or four, you know, official trailers available. Mm.
If the game lives up to the trailers, I'm very interested. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the, the things that gets me, and I think since we're now transitioning into our anticipated games, I think it's worth starting to talk about that. One thing that I have to be careful about, and I've sort of learned this over the years, the way that they present games at E3, mm-hmm. Game Awards, any of these sort of trailers, and what we actually get on the release are two different things. Yeah, and a lot of times, right. it, and I'm not talking about just graphics. Graphics are the most obvious. There's always this beautiful, like, Uncharted 4. Beautiful, and originally the original trailer, yeah. and then we, we actually saw what it was going to look like, and it's a huge step down. Spore looked like science when it first was released. Right. And seven so, years later, it came out as a cartoon. Yeah, mm-hmm. so there's, like, there's tons of these, like, huge variations between, not just for, for the art, but also a lot of times in terms of the promises of gameplay. We experienced that with Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, that's we true. talked about that a lot with the way the trailer presented how Very you could interact true. with Elizabeth, and then how you actually could in the game was extremely disappointing. Yeah, it was. So this happens all the time. So I have to be a little careful. Um, for me, if we're talking about Horizon Zero Dawn, I'm very interested in the game from a conceptual level, and I think it has a lot of promise. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of faith in the game because I don't have a lot of faith in the developers. And uh, they're the same people that did Killzone. Yeah, they did. Games which I was just never interested in at all. I just didn't really think they were that good, huge, even for what they were. Huge genre shift for them. Right. And so given the, given how big of a shift this is and given that... The concept is this, this such a big just, like juxtaposition of, of uh, themes where you've yeah. got this sort of tribalist, primitive element to it, but then also this like science fiction, these, there are these big robots yeah. that you have to kind Post-apocalyptic, of Post-apocalyptic, giant robots right. that have survived the, well, the, the fall of man, which are mm-hmm. now apparently in kind of a Stone Age sort of thing. But still the in fall a, of man and the fall of woe man. Uh-huh. Because uh-huh. You, the main you character is a, is a woe man. Right. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. correct. Um, and, and she's going around collecting, apparently, energy cores and, and pieces of tech to yeah. up- upgrade her stuff. Mm. Uh, and, and the concept is great. I'd lo- I, and the art is, is brilliant. It's beautiful. Mm. But well, will, it, will it actually succeed? It reminded me of my all-time favorite game. Journey to ever. the West. Yes. Um, really? Odyssey. Really? Uh, Odyssey to the West. Yeah, Odyssey to the West. Uh, it enslaved Odyssey to the West, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, which is extremely linear. It's a retelling of Monkey, um, which is Journey to the West, the, the yes. old um, yes. Chinese tale. Oh, yeah. But, but the, the art looked... To me, just like it, and it, it it had this robot ecology that that's or ecosystem mm-hmm. that that's built into it, and I love that idea mm-hmm. that you've got these herding creatures. What do they do? They go around and they actually eat stuff, and in the eating, they um, they convert into sh- convert it into this fuel, mm-hmm. biofuel, which they then offload. Amazing, well, yeah, amazing. I offload biofuel. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, try putting it in your car. See what happens. <laughs> um, so Probably yeah. not a good idea. Uh, so yeah, that is my most anticipated game. Probably my biggest fear with that one, again, going along with like the does it live up to the trailer? Mm-hmm. That the trailer captures like those perfect moments. I mean, there's gonna be like a lot, a lot of like really boring stuff well, well, in between the really awesome. And that's moments. okay. You need, no. you need the boring stuff. Yeah, it does create a rhythm. I think boring is a bad a bad word for it. Yeah, now, D, perhaps. Some games, beats. For mm-hmm. example, I think a game that I think had a ton of, bo- of boring moments between the action moments, literally boring moments, would be Shadow of the Colossus. Right. Which is a huge game that a lot of people... I didn't really like that game that much yeah. for that reason, because it really did have... There was nothing there aside was from just... There was literally nothing while right. you were trying to find the next Colossus. So it was a mm-hmm. literal boring moment. Now, yeah. some people may have enjoyed... Actually, it would the, be Colossus, singular. Colossi would be plural. Between the Colossi. Between the Colossi, okay. Yeah. You said until the between, next Colossi. What, between, oh, did I? Yeah. Well, we unfortunately have no way to go back and prove it. Oh, wait. <laughs> I guess we don't. Yeah, we do. Replay. <laughs> back to compatible. Here we talk about grammar. Um, but, <laughs> to whom but are we speaking I think about grammar? The, yes, there we go. <laughs> Stop it. The other thing that, that kind of got me, too, um, some things that I was reading from the, from the designers and the way they describe the game, because I've, I've heard it described as an action RPG. Right. Which... Then they described what they meant by RPG elements, and they said it was it falls somewhere between Assassin's Creed and Skyrim. Right, upgradable stuff. Right, so to me that says that's not an RPG, period. Because Skyrim's not... like Skyrim is like the most bare-bones, barely an RPG, you're really stretching it, guys. Mm. We sort of are retaining some of the RPG elements that were in Elder Scrolls before, but we're super dumbing them down. That was Skyrim. Wow. So, and it's saying it's between that and Assassin's Creed, which is not... No. Which is not an RPG so, at all. that to me says this game is not really a, So, are you saying Fallout RPG. 4 is not an RPG? Well, I haven't played Fallout 4, and I will say that Fallout 3 was more of an RPG than Skyrim. I'm talking specifically about Skyrim. Okay. And, this, and that's because that's what this game referred that's to it as. And I'm not saying it's not an RPG. I'm saying it's like the very, very lowest rung of what might be considered an RPG because it's super simplified all of the RPG elements that were in mm-hmm. the Elder Scrolls mm-hmm. series before it. So that's why I'm saying if you're between Assassin's Creed, which is not an RPG, and a game that is barely an RPG, 
you're not an RPG. Is why I'm saying it. I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing for the game. The I'm just saying the comparison's probably to take two games that are really popular and say it's like these two combined. Precisely, yeah. but that, it's, it's marketing. It's but that worries. But that, wor- that worries me because that's mm. coming from someone that was one of the designers. For what it's worth, I don't want Zero Dawn to be an RPG. I don't either. Mm. Honestly, yeah. no. When I first saw the trailer, I didn't yeah. even think it was at all. So. I think it'll be well if it's a lot like The Last of Us in a way. Ooh no! I don't well, want, I mean, I don't want not, to be like Last not of Us. extremely like it, but like in the terms of uh, like. I guess moving through the world and um, how you move through. Combat. That was also very linear, though. Not. I'm not saying it has to be linear. I'm saying the way you approach encounters can be more open. Mm. Do, do we know how? Oh, I see what you mean. Oh. Mm. Do we know okay. how linear this game in terms of like? Well, no, it's an open world game. I know that much. Um, okay. Because there's a lot of. Because there's another open world game that I wanted to. I wanted to mention. There are quite a few open world games. Well, there's another out. one that's coming out. If we're if we're. Well, do we want to go ahead and just like talk about each of our most anticipated? And... Yeah, yeah. I'll just finish the thought on Zero Dawn, which is that okay. the the thing I really liked about it is that the enemies have de- destructible elements mm-hmm. to them. So you have to blow off the armor first, and then you have to take off power core. You can uh, blow off a rocket launcher, pick it up, use it against the giant mechanical T Rex. Um, you can use cables to actually tie them down. There's apparently a number of different strategies, I think. Mm-hmm. And, I, and then, to be fair, uh, when we saw the big battle, I saw two or three different clips of how that was done, and it was done differently each mm-hmm. time. Yeah. But at the end, the sort of the finishing move was kind of the same. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense if that unit has a weak spot, and mm-hmm. you have to figure it out. So, I... I haven't played um, Mo- Monster Monster Hunter. What was the, the game you were just talking about? Witcher. I haven't played Witcher. Mm-hmm. Witcher. Yeah. Um, Witcher three at all. But if Witcher is anything like that, where you kind of have to figure out the weakness of the monster, that kind of a thing, mm-hmm. I think I really like it. So mm-hmm. I, I it, actually still want to borrow it from you. Yeah. No. It, it is. It is like that. But not to get into that. But I will say that um, they did mention as well because I was reading up about the game too that the way that they want to approach combat sort of is this like trial and error type thing where you're supposed right. to kind of figure it out, which. Actually, it's quite is actually different from the way Witcher approached it because Witcher is more about you're trying to learn what the monster is so that you can then understand how to beat ah, it. I gotcha. And then when you're in combat, you have a bunch of different options and th- ways that you can approach sure. it. You sort of just learn which attack it's weak against. As long right. as it's yeah. not Dark Souls, because I absolutely hate that franchise. Oh no, it's nothing like that. Yeah, um, I don't mean Witcher. Too hard I mean, for you. I mean zero. Well, yeah. actually, if you play uh, Witcher three on Death March, it will be my too frustration. Hard for you. My frustration <laughs> level for repeating a thing, whatever that thing is, mm-hmm. is once I have. Three or four times, and I figured out how to do it. I don't ever want to have to do it again right. in a video game. Well, Doc, did you like to tell us your next, your another game that you're looking forward? Yeah, to? Yeah, um, you mentioned Lost Guardian, which is from Team Ico. Um, this one's been on the radar for a while. It is extremely linear. Mm-hmm. Um, what I like about the idea of it is the companion. Um, having the little princess with you in Ico was great, but mm-hmm. she wasn't much of a fighter. And, you know, you're always protecting her with your stick against the shadow creatures. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, that, that was also kind of the point of the game, too. It was. It was absolutely. Um, and I loved it. I thought it was a great game. Mm-hmm. So I'm liking the idea of that beautiful escape the castle idea again. Um, and this time having a big, giant um, griffin creature that that's going to be able to fight with you and, and do all these cool things. But you know, at some point, it's going to die, and they're going to try to make you. <laughs> oh yeah! Sad. Oh totally. yeah! You're going to be sad. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and I'm also curious because there's this crazy fan theory about how Ico and Colossus uh, tie together. Yeah, the right? Colossus was a prequel to Ico. Yeah, so yeah. I'm really wondering if this fits in the same world. It sure looks like it does. Hmm. Um, but looking at the trailer, the destructible environments, the way they've done that, wonderful, beautiful so, stuff. So let me ask you this because this game has been in development slash slated for release for like what five six years now yeah. maybe more yeah um is it coming out in 2016 i think it is okay because i i would say i'm not so sure it's, i'm a little i'm more sure that legend of zelda will be pushed but i'm not so i, I think this one might be pushed too it, it wouldn't be surprised it's, it's more likely than really polished, beyond, yeah. beyond good and evil too <laughs> mm. Mm. that's true <laughs> um, um, do, you, do you have another one that you'd like to talk about? Or um, you well, to... you know what? You guys mentioned No Man's Sky, so I will I will mention it. Uh, 15 quintil... Or is it 18? I think it's 18 quintillion worlds. Um, that, re- a pre- very empty. Procedurally empty generated. Yeah. Um, but the, the thing about it is you can make updates, you can make changes, and then the new stuff that's explored can have that or not have that or mm. whatever. What I, I think the the difference between win and lose on this particular game for me is going to be is if i have a good and easy and and workable way to get to someone else's world um find my own worlds and and play it within the context of flow theory the way that i want to um if it ends up just being look more pretty oh look more pretty oh look more pretty i'm not going to care but there's one very small shot 
where it's like, do you want to harvest this ore? And it's in kind of a cube thing. It had this kind of kind of Minecrafty kind of mm-hmm. grid. And yeah, I went. It's Minecraft docs all over. And I went. I'm in. <laughs> right. So, um, but. Proviso, you know, I played Creativeverse for a while Mm -hmm. um, with the uh, Playful, which is local, Mm -hmm. and I kind of burned out pretty quick on it. So, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't been playing Minecraft for a long time. And if this is just a Minecraft in space with this really thing, then it's going to be a neat um, footnote in development history. Mm -hmm. And I think that this potential to hit the uh, generate the universe button. Generate the universe button. Yeah, I think that's going to be really important. It's going to be a tool for other games later. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, I hit the generate universe button, I, and that's going to be significant. Yeah, I'm just this, this. That's one of those games that I am just probably the most skeptical of, just mm-hmm. because what it's suggesting and actually having that work is almost impossible. And everything that I've seen from the trailer suggests that they're kind of approaching it incorrectly. Mm-hmm. At least from what I've seen so far. I don't know. If, if what um, people just, are looking for is kind of like free roam, free exploration, and it goes on forever, and that's what you're into, great. But for me, correct. I, want, I want a more direct play, gameplay experience. Mm-hmm. And so I've seen nothing right. that appeals to me. Exactly. That, that's my. I, yeah. I'm thinking that procedural generation usually ends up being, and unless you're talking, unless you keep the scale small enough that it can work, mm-hmm. um, if you try to make something this expansive and then have it procedurally generated, you're going to end up with a lot of empty space and a lot of, of boring areas that don't really have a lot sure. of of craft to them. I like the craft from, you know, a a designer. In order to to actually have that in a procedurally generated game, you have to have sort of like chunks of, of, like chunk sets of sort of, of sort of content so that you can sort of fit that together. And and you have to also have a more contained uh, space, in my opinion, and the the way that I've seen. So maybe they could pull this off. It's just that I would be shocked if they do. To misappropriate a word, I think what you're talking about is curation. Mm. Thank you, yes. And, And what you need is... That procedural button, which is then curated. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that'll maybe that'll happen. I think that that because because what I'm seeing, I have some friends that are developing a game that does use procedural generation, mm-hmm. and one of the things that they're doing to kind of have that that curated effect is mm-hmm. two things. One, they're keeping it on the the environments on a much smaller scale, right. and two, they're using a lot of parameters that sort of chunk elements in order to build out the dungeons. It's like a dungeon crawl. Yeah. So actually, it is a roguelike dungeon crawl kind of. And it, but that's they're using that to sort of build the space out. Mm-hmm. So I think that's you could sort of make it work if as long as you keep that scaled. I'm just worried about No Man's Sky having this combination of look, it's this huge expansive area. Oh, and it's also procedurally generated. Like right. that combo to me, um, it just feels too di- well disparate. Um, one last comparison to Minecraft. Then Minecraft was good, but whenever it became multiplayer, survival mm-hmm. multiplayer, it was great. Because then you had that moment of, look what I built. Mm-hmm. And you had that moment of going over the hill and going, whoa, someone's been here. Look what they built. That social element is the glue, the mortar, if you will, that holds the bricks together. Mm-hmm. And if that's not available in this, um, it's not going to work. But what I predict is that it's going to end up more like EVE, mm-hmm. EVE Online. That's where I think this is headed. Um, and I don't mean in terms of quests and that sort of thing, and but I mean in terms of... Um, not <laughs> less spreadsheets. <laughs> less spreadsheets. Yeah. Um, uh, but in terms of immersion property, um, of look, I went. I built a base. Everyone knows mm-hmm. that the place you go in this sector is this, um, you know, this base over here. I think what will be interesting with no orbiting Man's, space station. What, what like I think is the most interesting with No Man's Sky to me is whenever whenever I talk about it with people, I always seem to get. They always seem to have different expectations for what the game will be. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like I've, like what you just described. It's totally different from what I hear from someone else. Uh-huh. And to me, that almost invariably means it's going to disappoint like 85% of the audience <laughs> right, because almost no one's going to actually get what they want because uh, everyone has different expectations. And part of that is because they really haven't given that much information. That's and some of the point. information they have given is almost contradictory. Um, regardless, though, we can go ahead and, and move on. Do you have yeah. another game you'd like to talk about? Or um, I know I've got some. Or I, I've, got a, I've got a short list, but I tell you what, let's do our, our, our main ones and then we'll come back around to other ones that are on our radar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, um, I'll go ahead and talk some about Doom. Um, this is one of those things that I'm, I'm very excited about Doom for a couple of reasons. The new Doom. And they're just calling it Doom, not Doom 4. Um, and I think... Because you don't want to remember what Doom 3 was like. Exactly. That's actually what I want to talk about. And, and a big part of that is, uh, you know, Doom 3, I think, it tried. It went for a little bit more of a horror aesthetic, although it had some very, some weirdness to it. Some real jankiness. Like, um, one of, like, the, the little, um... 
oh, I forgot the name, but the the little dudes that that cut, that sort of jump out at you and they have like the shotguns or whatever, uh, the humanoids. They would kind of come out at you. They'd, they'd like roll and crouch and just kind of stand there and shoot. I mean, just like weird, not really moving very well. Every everything kind of came across as we're trying to frighten you in the dark. It, it it was both an action game, but trying to be sort of a horror game. It just mm. was like this sort of weird melding. It didn't really have good level design either. Um, I think it took the series in the wrong direction. And with Doom, uh, with the new Doom, which is called Doom, it's trying to return to the uh, to the old game, but also keeping in mind, you know, modern uh, modern gameplay aesthetics, all the things that we've learned over time. I think I can compare it most to something like um, Wolfenstein, uh, The mm-hmm. New Order, which mm-hmm. is a game that we that we played for one of our roundtable mm-hmm. um, discussions, and it's a game that I thought was actually excellent. I loved it. I loved um, Old Blood, which I've talked about before, which is like the sort of um, expansion to it, or it's also a, it's a standalone expansion mm-hmm. to the game. Um, and it really sort of recaptures that old style uh, run and gun aesthetic, and Doom f- really feels like it's going for that as well. That old, that run and gun, uh, fast paced, intense fighting uh, demons. You know, lots of lots of blood and gore, but it's cool because they're all you know, hideous monsters. Probably some fun one liners. Uh, possibly, although Doom, unless they go Doom the guy, the yeah, Doom guy is not quite as in. He's not really as into the sound, the. Mm. You know, little one-liners mm-hmm. as uh, Blaskowitz is <laughs> from Wolfenstein. Duke Nukem. <laughs> or Duke Nukem, right. But Blaskowitz, too, had those one-liners, yeah, did, if you remember. Yeah. And I think... Except he always said them kind of like this. Yeah. Because he was talking to himself. Yeah. Well, and then, of course, with, with Duke Nukem, it was... They were trying to ape uh, Bruce Campbell's mm. lines and mm-hmm. mannerisms, and mm-hmm. that kind of became a whole legal issue at one point. Did it even? Wow. Yeah, it ended up being, falling into fair use, but um, from what I've heard, Bruce Campbell was still kind of bitter about it because they never consulted him they never asked him to do it they never like it just kind of was we're just going to pretend like we have bruce campbell doing this role and like steal a bunch of his lines and huh. then that's funny pepper them into the game and never try to him or mention him and he's been it's actually i've read some, some interviews with him where he's mentioned it before wow. way back in the 90s he probably doesn't even well, you know, care they, anymore they, they've got an evil dead series coming back now so oh i've seen it yeah oh, i've seen you? i've seen the i've seen the first season oh wow it's Fantastic. A lot of people say it's really good. I I didn't know it was out. It's out. I gotta go, guys. (laughs) (laughs) That'll be something that we can talk about I can pull it up on my phone right here. It's uh, (laughs) it's, it's good. It is is really good. Um, But anyway, sorry not to get too far off on that. But yeah, uh, Doom to me is... It's one of those games that I think it's time for to actually bring back this style. The designers have gone on record saying that they are... They are aiming for the gameplay of specifically Doom Two is the the one that they're really aiming for. So, do you think we'll see the WAD community step up to the plate and and have all these new things? Speaking of which, one of the one of the early WADs that mm-hmm. I loved was the Evil Dead WAD, mm. and it actually had that sound bite in it. Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's. I'm not entirely sure how they're going to set that up in terms of like I haven't even looked into it if they actually even allow for that's funny mod they do in the trailer I saw that they, they plan to okay. sweet well that was my talk on Doom I've got other games to talk about but let's move around with uh, Chris talking about his most anticipated game so the single most anticipated like I said earlier is Persona 5 um, really fell in love with Persona 4 when I played and I played it like years after it first came out yeah. so apparently it held up pretty well I think we talked about it when you first it was you mm. played Persona 4 Golden right yeah and, and I wrote a little article about it back when we wrote right, articles right right yeah um, so I'm really looking forward to 5 um, it looks like it's gonna be a lot of the same in a lot of ways they're changing up a little bit in the sense that rather than being sort of caught up in this mystery you're trying to solve now you've got a more active cast they're actually going out and doing this thing that they do mm-hmm. um some interesting themes um i'm also seeing a bit of a trend where like you know they have a different primary color for the past few games um to kind of like drive the aesthetic uh so in persona 3 which i didn't play but i've heard a lot about it was blue and persona 4 it was yellow uh, so there's a lot of I'm yellow. Sorry, in Persona 4, it was golden. <laughs> it was golden on the re-release, but the, <laughs> color, the color scheme was yellow. Um, and then, in this one, it's red. Um, and so it's going to... Um, I think it looks really cool. Some of the gameplay that I've seen looks really neat. Um, just, I, at this point, I have a lot of trust in Persona to deliver a cool product. And just given how much I loved 4, I just automatically have to look forward to 5. Yeah, it's on my list, too. Mm-hmm. I have to say, it's on, it's on my list. Um, I really did enjoy Persona 4. Mm-hmm. And um, it'll be interesting for me to go and play Persona 5 because it's been a game that I've been looking forward to since Persona 4, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I've changed a lot in terms of the sort of games that I play, mm-hmm. and I don't really play too many JRPGs anymore, yeah. and I, I don't really watch anime anymore either, to mm-hmm. be honest. So 
it'll be interesting to see how I approach Persona Five and, and yeah. just what sort of enjoyment I might get out of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm it's on my list. It's on my top five. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, would you like to talk about? And you can talk about any of your most anticipated. But what was the one that you said you probably? Well, I don't have a PS4, so I can't play Unraveled. So you don't have a PS4. Yet. <laughs> I'm not getting a PS4. No, not you four. Not I am poor. <laughs> I cannot get a PS4. But you could win one in a contest. If I want to go to PhD, <laughs> I, if I want to do a PhD, I cannot get a PS4. Please send your checks to the uh, Brian uh, Donation uh, Fund. Go, go fund me. The, the Would you like to start PS4? Go fund me? <laughs> Actually, we could do that. Go fund me see for Brian's PS4. See if it gets anywhere. <laughs> Um, you know, my joke answer sandwich. is I'm looking forward to uh, Watch Dogs 2 because that is going to be an absolute train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Because Ubisoft cannot save that series. It's yeah. it's dead. It needs to stay dead. Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that one. But did, did you want to talk a little bit about Unraveled? Or or do you rather talk about another game that you're looking forward to? I don't really have any games that I'm looking forward to. I mean... Are, are there any video games that you were planning to play in 2016 that are new? Um... Technically, Darkest Dungeon. Okay. But I've already talked about that one. That's true. Well, I might like playing XCOM too, but mm-hmm. I'm not really... I, 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 XCOM, the first, the one, the one, the last one they made, like, I liked that. Mm-hmm. It was fun. And then I was like, okay, now I'm done with this this kind of series. I'm, I'm, I'm full up. Mm-hmm. And, and it's st- uh, squad-based tactical RPG, right? That's a good way RPG, to say it. Right? Mm-hmm. That's a really good way to say it. You know, I never, I never beat XCOM. I don't think anybody beats XCOM. I think they yeah. just abandon it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I it's hopeless. Did you actually? Mm-hmm. Well, i um, Go you. Because uh, I'm that way. I'm like, oh, there's a second one. Uh, I'll wait till it's free. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm full up. Yeah, like it's it. one of those games where I, I, I have it recommended to me a lot because I like generally those style of games, but because it's more, um, it's that sci-fi bent as opposed to the fantasy bent. Of and not anime. No, no, no. I, it's not the it's not the anime part. I wouldn't say that like Final Fantasy Tactics, for example, is not anime at all. Actually. But I had tremendous it's fun not. playing it. Final Fantasy. If you played Final Fantasy Tactics, it is not anime at all. I don't play Final Fantasy games. Period. Right. No. A lot of Final Fantasy games are anime. Solidarity, brother. No, it, they they definitely <laughs> are. But Final Fantasy Tactics is not one of them. It is not at all anime inspired. In terms of like the themes, the way they approach it, it's actually not. But yeah. So I mean, XCOM is a game that maybe I'll check it out at some point. But yeah, it's one of those that. Yeah, when X- I have free time, mm-hmm. I'll X- be like a, you know, retiree, I'll play some XCOM. So. Uh, XCOM 2 is another one that is on my radar. Um, I actually haven't heard much about it, but just the fact that it's XCOM 2 and I really liked XCOM Enemy Unknown, um, it's definitely on my list of looking forward to. So. I was a fan of the series when it was the original one, <laughs> although I got into it years after it <laughs> came out. Fair enough. You even said that kind of like you're a disgruntled old man. Yeah, well, I, 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 a story I, played the, the <laughs> I played UFO Enemy Unknown <laughs> no. in the freshman year of college. Yeah, nice. That's that's where I like, oh, man, this is great. Well, let's check out Terror from the Deep. Oh no, <laughs> Terror from the Deep was awful. It's just well, we've we've come back around to Doc. Would you like to mention another game that yeah, you're interested in? Um, I am looking forward to Fortnite. I've been looking forward to Fortnite for a while. Um, <laughs> It's kind of got Minecrafty elements. It's also got kind of Sims elements. Oh, it's Minecraft. Yeah. Um, but it's not. It's not cubes. It's actually. Oh, look! I found a. I found a wall. Now I can duplicate this wall. Um, the. It's Wallcraft. Yeah, it, it is actually. That's a great name for it. Wallcraft. And wall, given, wall, some wall, other, wall, 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 given some of the other. Wall of Wallcraft. Given some of the other, like um, you know, in four, um, in Fallout Four, the the construction and that sort of a thing. Uh, I think that we have a lot of potential of with this being really good. Um, completely differently, I'm looking forward to Battlefleet Gothic. Mm-hmm. It was one of my favorite um, miniature games back in the day. And, uh, you know, in, in space there is no up. So I think that being <laughs> in the only video block. game... Yeah, in the video game space, I think that there's a lot of opportunities to do BFG right with the ramming and all that stuff. Um, I think it's really cool. And I just love those massive cathedral ships of the 40K <laughs> universe. They're so dumb. cool. Yeah. They're stupid, but cool. No, I'm gonna, I, if I get that game, it's orcs. Orcs all the way. Well, and that's the thing is, I, I want to make sure that I can play orcs because um, if I can't play orcs, I'm out. I'm, I'm an orc. Well, okay. there's also Total War, Warhammer. That's true, and that you is, can definitely play orcs in that. That is true, uh, but what I want to see is the massive um, like orc ship that was made out of the meteorite. You know, I actually have one of those at home. I made it. Uh, the way that you are supposed to make those, they never made a model for it. Is you get a bunch of putty and all your spare parts, and mm-hmm. you just cram them together, and then. You paint it. It's a rock. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, th- there's two. There's the orc rock, and then there's the orc... Uh, I forget what the other one's called, actually. The mega something or another. Mega rock. Mega, well, yeah. But um, a few others on my list. I've never played a single Far Cry game. I, I was going to mention Far Cry, Far Cry Primal, Primal, so I thought it'd be good to talk about. Yeah. Have you, you really have not played a single one? No, I haven't. With Far Cry Primal, it's... 
Um, you're in, I guess, like the Neolithic era, is that mm-hmm. essentially? Mm-hmm. And you could do things like ride on ride on woolly mammoths, that kind of thing. But it's it, it's going to take the Far Cry gameplay elements of this open world sandbox kind of game. You can run around. You can you can hunt um, hunt animals, yep. gather a bunch of you know materials, that kind of thing. But there's of course other other hazards and things to fight and kill. I'm assuming there's going to be bases too, since that's a big like base capture is a big part of that series. Okay. Um, yeah, what, there, what there are other you, tribes. What interests you the most? The in historical this aspect. Um, really? Yeah. That, that's honestly what what I like about um, those kinds of games. See, they they could have gone. This game for, takes place in prehistory. Well, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> I don't think they're going to do anything. <laughs> they could have. They could have taken the low hanging fruit and gone for you know dinosaurs and stuff. That's true. And it's like exactly. Yeah. I have no true. interest in that. Yeah. I really don't. I, no, no dinosaurs in the post apocalypse. That that's fine. Cyber but, dinosaurs. Yeah. They just they just. Uh, that's future history. Well, they're actually uh, blood dragons. It's speculative yeah, fiction. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I like that idea of um, you know early man. Kind of thing. I, honestly, thinking about games, and it's interesting because we talked about Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, which is sort of almost like it's it when they first presented it, it felt like it's going to take place in a similar era, and then mm-hmm. it turned out to be post apocalypse. But right. I find it interesting we have two games that almost share those themes that are coming out in the same year. Yeah. Um, although, like you said, this one is sort of um, it takes a very different take. It, it is more of this. Um, trying to be at least like historical accuracy i don't know about that but at least it's trying to be more it's trying to be less fantastical about it let's say is it by ubisoft oh yeah and and i forget the name of um there's a there's a lesser known game that's supposed to be an rpg that's purely historical set up in like norway or something yeah it's i want to say it's kingdom come right kingdom come battlefield that sounds right or battlefield kingdom come maybe yeah that's that sounds right yeah my mind went to a roguelite that is a a finnish Net hack, basically. And, and I'm like you, Brian. I want to watch the train wreck that is this game because I, I think it's going to do absolutely terribly. What game? The, uh, the, King- the Battlefield Kingdom Come. Yeah. Oh, that one. Because um, we're, we're going to get in there and we're going to be like, okay, now I want my flaming fantasy sword and I want to kill a dragon. And it's not going to happen. It's going to be, um, yeah, you, you work on the farm until you make um, enough money to go buy yourself an ox. And it's, I, I don't know. And I mean, then you get the plague and die. I'm trying to imagine the story and it's just, it's not coming to me. Um, but then again, you know, some of my favorite novels are historical fiction. So. It's called Kingdom Come Deliverance. Deliverance. I was. Okay. I, was I, I knew Battlefield world, sounded wrong because yeah, it's not about battle. battle. No, that's that's Star Wars. <laughs> that's right. But don't don't you play essentially a um, like you're just a like surf or whatever. Yeah, you're a peasant. Oh, right. you get you, you get handed a pike and told to stand in line and die. No, it, it, so, to I me assume... it sounds like uh, like a more serious Harvest Moon is what you're it building it. Across <laughs> it, right? No, see, I'm, you're building a laugh, kingdom. But... I would assume. I would assume you're building a kingdom, mm. and I don't know. The, the details are sketchy now. Well, but... I think you're a person within that kingdom, aren't you? Well, yeah, but I. We I mean, don't know anything about this. We don't game. know anything about it. This is clear. reckless speculation. I, I simulator 2016. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, but and that's the thing. I'm wondering if they can make this work. Because if they can make this work, this is going to be absolutely huge in educational realms. Mm. Um, and, and and right now, the closest thing we get to you know historically accurate um, locations are things like Assassin's Creed, mm-hmm. uh, LARPing. Um, well, it's. No, I'm talking about video games. They actually use LARPing uh-huh. in Scandinavian countries to teach uh, kids with disadvantages. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's absolutely cool. And they also, I mean, they love it, LARPing. So, okay, they, so they, I, they do things like, you know, the Fallout LARP over in uh, Chernobyl. Mm-hmm. But so, <laughs> Stalker. So I looked I looked it up. Um, it is, it's going to just be set in the 15th century medieval kingdom of Bohemia. Bohemia? Oh, no, yes. hipsters. With its focus on historically <laughs> oh, accurate and realistic content. Oh, no, the plague. So, yeah, <laughs> and hipsters. Wow. Uh, I it's would imagine there, there's going to probably be plague incorporated into it. Um, but yeah, it's going to feature period-accurate armor, clothing, combat techniques, real-world castles. Um, Te- combat techniques. Recreated. Stand in a line yeah. and die. Recreated with the uh, assistance of architects and historians. The stand in a line and die was not a part of combat. In that well, that's what you have the serfs do. They so, tie up the cavalry, you go around and him in the flank. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't I want to call like it stand in a line. This is something I, I we haven't, haven't seen before, but... Um, Think about like a, a World War II game or something, or a World mm-hmm. War One game. Which one? Any of them. Um, you know, it, and the focus is on combat in that sense. But but what if we had a historically accurate one that wasn't about combat? I've always wanted to see, and like you know, this isn't that, but I've always wanted to see a very simulationist, maybe a short game, more of an experiential game. Yeah. Where you're playing as a Civil War soldier, mm-hmm. and you do have to stand in a line and take one shot and reload and take one shot. Well, and that sounds so cool. Once yeah. again, that's that is that would be not Civil War. That would be like the Revolutionary, Revolutionary War, War and the and 
plain as the British Redcoats, and you have to right. do that. Because you didn't do that in, in the Civil War, no, it was much oh, no, more... No, the Civil War was very, very much lines. In fact, their tactics were way behind mm, their tactics. No, no, not true there at all. Of, there was a lot of running beginning, and shouting, maybe. but... Yeah, there was a lot of, like, like The technology at that point was a, a lot of... Well, they, all, they also yeah. had charges and stuff, and so that would be, like, yeah. more action-packed yeah. parts. That's what I'm charge. saying. I mean, like, the British would literally just stand there and well, you get know, in the we, line and, like, we load their guns and just shoot. We won the Revolutionary War by being guerrilla terrorists. Exactly, yes. I mean, we're actually... It was really terrorist is a strong word, ignoble. But if you if you use your history from like elementary, have you seen school, the Patriot? Are you using the Patriot as a scholarly <laughs> source? Yes. <laughs> I question all your Mel Gibson and... films are historically I, accurate. I will agree with that. All of them. I will agree with that. <laughs> I have one more game. Okay, go ahead. One hundred foot robot golf. Okay. One hundred foot robot golf. Exactly what it is. Nice. Okay. What, what's the golf ball? It's, it's big. Oh, okay. So you basically you're playing you're playing golf. You're as piloting robots. a giant robot playing golf. Oh, okay, nice. So it's like you instead of it's and it's going to have giant robots VR. fighting each other. Instead, you play golf. Did the Japanese come up with this game? No, it's a small studio that came up with Roundabout. Oh, hmm. yeah. I, I would not have thought a Japanese studio would do this because to me it seems more like some Western studio trying to sort of take a take a joke from. You know, the Japanese it was, aesthetic. It wasn't a joke from the uh, this Japanese aesthetic, but it was an offhand joke that then became a game. Hmm. I like it. Cool. Uh, Friday the 13th, the game. And the reason, yes. I, the reason I mentioned this, and it was not what I really thought that you'd play, I just thought it would be funny to mention. Um, the thing I thought was interesting about this, this was a, a Kickstarter campaign game. And this is not on my most anticipated list. This is on my sort of like also ran list. Yeah. But I want to I talk about it a bit because it's, it has an interesting concept. And that is that they've sort of recreated the Camp Crystal Lake experience mm-hmm. and it's a multiplayer game in which one person plays jason right mm-hmm. and then everybody else plays the camp kids right and the interesting part about that is of course jason has all these all the jason abilities like he can just teleport, teleport. to a different part you know when he needs to when it's you know you know thematically appropriate relevant. yeah appropriate thank you um i think there's a lot of potential in this game oh man i, I would really never do. want to play anything but jason though i that's part that's part of the the the, the what I would find interesting is that how many people are going to be willing to play the camp kids? Mm-hmm. Because I, J- playing Jason seems like it'd be so much more fun, but are you going to be able to find a game in which there's enough people willing to play camp kids to make it fun? And is playing a camp kid going to be worth it if like, if there's a way to defeat Jason? It's just random, and you, and you wait your turn, and, and then you get to be... Yeah, but not, if I have to wait my turn like three rounds in a row, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to give there's up. There's way too much evidence in the, in the Minecraft minigames to show that this will work. Um, in fact, that that's almost an exact mechanic that um, I can think of, where you have to camouflage yourself as either a, like a pig or a chicken or whatever, and and then when they come around and they try to kill you, you're citing Minecraft mini games as a so, scholarly source now. Huh? <laughs> yes, yes I am. Right. First it was Mel Gibson, now it's Minecraft. So I should say this is more relevant. You're yeah, saying not just not scholarly. Not just known Minecraft anymore. No, that's true, but I don't think he ever did. <laughs> not in the sense that I mean. So. So, Doc, would you say, um, is this a game that you're actually looking forward to? At least a bit to kind of monitor and I've see been it monitoring it, and I'm, I'm curious. Because I've been interested since I heard of it. I thought it, I, I am a Friday the 13th fan, mm-hmm. um, and I, I think that this game has potential if, if you can get the right crowd to play it, and that's what worries yeah. me, is that you're going to get a crowd that... Um, Gives up the first round. Because they want to be Jason, or you get, like, the kids that don't really care, or, like, someone plays Jason and, like, doesn't really know what they're doing yeah, so they end up dying immediately. I, mean, I don't see that as a problem at all. And I have a lot more faith in this game, I'll say, than, than some of the others that we've talked about, like No Man's Sky, for instance. Yeah, it's sure, a lot sure. easier to pull off. Sure. Um, it really is more all going to be all about the community as opposed... The com- it's going to live and die based on the community and not so much based on the way that it's yeah, made that's, that's true. and produced. I have a standing policy never to get excited about Kickstarter games. <laughs> I agree with you on that one, too. And, and that's the other reason why I also run. <laughs> um, another game Even that your I, own... Except for a zone. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. I think, a year I think ago. tabletop and video games on Kickstarter, they're very different animals. I've seen a lot more successful tabletop games yeah. than I have seen successful video games. That's true. So but usually some of the, them, the money they ask for is a lot lower than... Exactly. Them. Some of them people get excited about, they arrive, and then they just kind of fade away because... Mm-hmm. Fellowship's coming out soon. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. That's pretty cool. Well, so the other one I've got on here, and this is probably one that, that Chris has on his list, would be Fire Emblem Fates. Yep. Um, and this is a game that's coming out next month. Yep. I'm hoping to have enough money to buy it when it comes out. Yeah. So I'm looking, <laughs> do you know what version you're going to buy yet? Send uh, your checks to... I'm going to get all three. Stop asking so, for money. Hold on. So yeah, so there is um, two versions of this game. One is in Conquest, and the other, what's the other one? I'm sorry, there's three versions. Yeah, well, um, there, there's two on disc, and the one's downloadable. 
<laughs> but, but when, you buy, different... when you buy the bundle, oh, day okay. one DLC. The... Yep. <laughs> well, no, no. There's actually two different. It's almost like when um, what's the best way I can? Isn't it? Isn't it somewhat similar to the the uh, the, le- the two Legend of Zelda Capcom ones the games the uh, the Game Boy Color yeah Oracle or, Oracle, 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 Seasons. Oracle Seasons yeah or Ages, Ages and Seasons, Seasons yeah. kind of because it's sort of like that although I think they're a lot closer I in think terms of story. what it is like do you recall in um, Wolfenstein the new one when you choose who you save and you get two different timelines based on that yeah and how the timelines were almost exactly the same yeah so it's not going to be as the same in this from what I understand but basically instead of having one game remake a decision at the beginning you have to play through twice they're just making it two games. It, so, so decision is already made for you based on what you buy. Well, sort of, but you also know kind of like you're choosing the game that you buy based. You're choosing on your waifus. <laughs> sort of, I think that's part of it. I think you're also, <laughs> that's why you're playing it. You're gym. choosing. You're choosing your main. Admit character. it, Jim. <laughs> no, actually, I play. I play it honestly for the battles. Mm-hmm. I've been. A, I've played yeah, Fire Emblem since the first. I've been, I've been playing Fire Emblem since yeah since. And they you read first it for the articles America. too, huh? You read it for the articles. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that went right over your head. A Playboy reference. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. No, no, I, I got the reference. I just don't see how it's relevant for. It's not like this. It's not like this is like a porn simulator game, dude. I don't know where you're. No, it's a waifu from. raising simulator. But it's really not. Actually, they only introduced marriage in the uh, last one, and the main reason for that was so that you can have um, your kids, which then take traits from both the father and the mother. That I see where you're coming from. I see it more as eugenics than waifu simulator. Yeah. Well, I see it more as like <laughs> waifu simulator is the sugar coating. Yeah. No, I think it's like actually stat matching is what mm. it is. Like you cuz I I would get Aryan basics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's I mean you could you can look at it different ways, but I'm looking at it. You heard it here first. Jim is confirmed new genesis. Yes. I have in in Fire Emblem, yes. Definitely. That's going to be my take on it again. Now we just need to cut that so it sounds out of context. No, it'll just be the stinger. <laughs> well, please don't. That'd be, That'd be a bad thing. But yeah. of the episode. Oh, yeah. we weren't talking about Horizon Zero, though? No. Oh. Eugenics? No. <laughs> no. Um, Wait, I did that joke wrong. Uh, and another game. Oh, we weren't talking about No Man's Sky? There we go. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, another game that I, I would like to talk about um, is Batman, the Telltale game, which is coming in oh, 2016. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's To me, we've, we, we really don't have much information about it, aside from knowing that it is a Telltale game that is Batman-related. Yeah, but scared. I think that there's potential there. Um, I am a longtime fan of Batman. I've been reading the comics since I was a little kid. I've been consuming Batman media since I was a little kid. Um, Whatever they do with it, it's going to be better than Minecraft Telltale game. Probably. I mean, I've not played Minecraft Telltale game, but I've heard it's not good. So I I think that what they need to do with this is make it so instead of the silent option always being there, it's my parents are dead. (laughs) My parents are dead! (laughs) My parents are dead! (laughs) I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Yeah. Uh, I'm Batman, my parents are dead. Yeah. Your, your options are, I'm Batman, my parents are dead. And Ellipsis. punch, and swear to me. Swear, swear to me. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, what what we talked about, uh, Doc and I talked about this last time, how it would be very interesting if the choices that you had in the game were actually... Different um, styles of Batman. Different styles of Batman. Yeah. So you can have the old, the classic, um, you know, Neil Adams and... Um, uh, now I'm blanking on this Oh, Denny O'Neill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can have... Uh, Adam West. Yeah, the Adam goofy West Batman. version. You, so basically it's the 70s version of Batman. You get the sort of goofy Adam West version from the 60s. You maybe can get like the 90s sort of like... Actually, the animated series version is too close to the Daniel O'Neill one. That'd be the same version. I would like to see a Batman Brave and the Bold uh, option. And that one's also too close to Adam West if we're doing... The idea isn't to make him Adam West. It's to do like the campy style, the like the more serious like um, like 70s-esque slash animated series Batman. Mm-hmm. You could and have the, you know, Christopher Nolan style, swear to me, Batman, yeah. where it's like over dark, grim yeah. dark Batman. Yeah, grim dark Batman. That would also be the 90s Batman, mm-hmm. by the way. The would, dark and Batman. then that right there is your three options plus silence, and there you go. I would like to see that have an effect on the villain. In the in the game, so that like yeah. if you're more Adam West, you get Adam West. Uh, you get or, King, you get like King Tut or like uh, like um, uh, Doc, what is it? What is it? Like, Eggman or, or what's what's the guy? The Vincent Penguin? Price? No, no, the Vincent Price play like the Egg Egghead. You get you get Egghead. That was Eggman. That was a yes. Sonic thing. Yeah, Egghead. <laughs> you've seen the you've seen this Adam West series, right? No. Oh, you have to see it. It's great. Wait, wait, which one do you have to play if you want to get Arnold Schwarzenegger, Doctor F- uh, Mister Freeze? That was um, Pro- Batman and Robin, or Batman, like yeah. one, one of those. It was in the nineties. Uh, yeah, it was. I think Batman and Robin. Mm. I think everybody just chill. So, what do y'all think of the Batman Telltale game? Is it one that you're looking to play? Or I could care less. Not really. I you don't, don't really care. I have a lot yeah. of faith. In I don't Telltale. play Telltale really? games. I, I'm interested. Doc plays a lot of them. I'm, I'm I wondering do. why I, you're I, not interested in this one. <laughs> It's probably blasphemy, but I'm just not a huge Batman fan. Mm. That's okay. Um, everybody has. You their need Batman. to get out of here right now. I know. <laughs> no. I know. Everybody has their Batman. Yeah. Um, you know, the, every generation has its own Batman. You just listed all of them, and it was fantastic that you just mm. did that. My Batman was the cartoon from the '90s. 
Every Batman, yeah, every Batman since just hasn't been up to it. And like I said before, the Batman from here's the thing with, with the Batman Luke from the nineties. Skywalker 90s. is Joker, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that and I love that series. That series is awesome. That series Batman is pretty much the seventies Batman, the Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams Batman. See, I disagree. It is based. No, it is. I disagree. It, they literally had episodes lifted directly from that run. Okay. Yes, they are. No, this, but they did. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like a lot of different takes on Batman. I think. I think all of them are, are equally relevant in their own way, which is why I think this Telltale game has so much potential. If they can just do it right, if they can do it right, which I'm not so sure they can because they have a they have a variety, a very large gap in quality. I think like they some have great Tales from the Borderlands, and they also have they different Minecraft. Yeah. But when it comes yeah. to Batman, I'm full. Stop stealing my words. You didn't <laughs> cite that properly. We're gonna we're gonna actually cut it so that it seems like he Doc came up with it and you didn't. <laughs> yeah. We'll make sure to, to edit everything so that you're a great fool. Which is great. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a tall order to make well, you What's like the we one? in the editing? <laughs> <laughs> every, well, every, uh, uh, every second of editing that I do <laughs> is going to make sure... And the, anyway. So the other game I like... Is it Lying a Sin? Uh, probably. I did want to mention just real quick the Torment Tides of Numenera as a game that I've been excited for for um, a couple of years, since about 2014, mm-hmm. and um, now I'm not even sure what to think of it, because it's taken so long to come out, and I don't play as many PC games ah, as I used to anymore. Ah, the effect. Yeah, but it really is um, based on, I looked it up, it was. It is based on that Numenera universe that you were talking about. Oh, by Mon- the Monty Cook one? Yes, I looked it up. Um, mm-hmm. It It is, of course, meant to be a spiritual uh, successor to Planescape Torment, okay. but the universe that it takes place in is the Numenera universe yeah, the ninth uh, by world. Monte Cook. Yeah. Well, yeah, the ninth, Actually, the ninth, sounds really intriguing. Yeah, the Ninth World yeah. kind of fits in with Planescape Torment because <laughs> it is a huge mishmash of layers upon layers of civilizations that rose up, died, and then aliens came, and then left, yeah. and then dimensional beings, and then all of this kind of stuff. So it's it's Small World. Small World? The board yeah. Game. <laughs> yeah, the board game. Oh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's also everything that happens behind Fry while he's frozen. Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's definitely a game that has been on my radar for a long time to the point where, like you were saying, like the Duke Nukem effect, by the time it's now about to come out, I'm not even so sure what to think of it because it's been pushed back so many times and it's been just... It's, I've cha- I think I've changed a lot since then, to be honest, even though it's been a few years in terms of the, w- the way that I play games. So um, I still want to play it, but I'm, I'm interested to see just how intensely I will play it. Mm-hmm. But if it, if it if it turns out to be like Planescape Torment and gives you the sort of um, options and the and the has the very rich story that Planescape Torment did, I think I'll still love it. Let's stick a pin in that one because I I think that's a great one for. How many table. pins do you yeah. have? No, oh, infinite, infinite infinite pins, infinite pins. Maybe we could do that one as a round table. Them? How many angels? Well, uh, on the infinite pins, right. mm-hmm. infinite. Uh, um, <laughs> By so definition, there's a limited number of the host of heaven. Um, so we've already talked about a few of these. Um, my most anticipated, we already mentioned Persona 5, Fire Emblem Fates, uh, Legend of Zelda. Um, the, I'm going to hold yeah. judgment on whether or not it comes out in 2016 until I hear about the NX thing in mm. E3. That's why I'm I not talking about be, Zelda, because yeah. it's just, I don't think it's coming in 2016. Mm. I, I, I'm looking forward to it big time, mm. but I just don't think it's coming. Um, you might notice a trend with mine. It's a lot of Nintendo. Um, Star Fox Zero, um, it's not like, it's, it's kind of like a runner-up for me, but I am looking forward to it. And then, actually, uh, Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. Oh, um, yeah. I, 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 that looks pretty interesting. Yeah. It has a very interesting aesthetic, and when I saw the, the like, sort of, beyond the teaser trailer, which is basically just text and a few images mm-hmm. borrowed from the two series, um, the first, like, real trailer they had of it made it look more like it's going to be the gameplay of Shin Megami Tensei with themes and characters pulled from Fire Emblem. So waifus. <laughs> Maybe we'll okay. find out. I, I, I need my uh, waifus. That's what that's what Ryan the, says. The the aesthetic is really interesting. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it has like kind of like this sort of pop feel to it. it gives me a weird vibe, um, like um, the world ends with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's those are kind of the ones I'm looking forward to. And that's nice. a good comparison, actually, Brian. Lot, lots of Wii U, very Thank Wii U. Thank you. Heavy, yeah. So. Yeah. I'll throw out Recore and Quantum Break because I'm I'm kind of looking forward to those two. Recore, um, you've got this little orb, and it has the personality of robots, and you upgrade your robot. <laughs> and robot dog. First he's a dog, and then he's a uh, behemoth, and all these other things. Mm-hmm. And Quantum Break is time travel, and they're probably going to mess it all up. Um, because but, time travel is messy. But it's but it's time travel, and I've, I've been looking for the perfect time travel uh, game forever. There's never been a perfect time travel it, it, game. It doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Anyway. yeah. Well, actually, it has and never will. No. No, if it does it, exist, it will time travel there, to us. Exactly. There, is, there does <laughs> exist a perfect time travel game. It's called Chrono Trigger. But it's not perfect because of the time travel. 
but go ahead, move yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. No, that was it. Yeah, okay. Uh, I guess the other game I wanted to mention that has not been talked about yet is uh, Bombshell. It is the uh, spiritual successor to Duke Nukem. It is by 3D Realms. Uh, features, uh, surprise, surprise, a bombshell woman, female mm-hmm. character, that uh-huh. is that has all these like big, big gu- like giant guns that she shoots, because of course it's Duke Nukem inspired. Um, it's an interesting game that I'm sort of monitoring. I'm not so sure. Will it, it take 13 years to come out? And four studios? <laughs> no, not really. It's it's only been in development for a, for a few years. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought the 3D Realms died in the Is Gearbox too. doing it? Um, 3D Realms. Oh. Okay. Is like, whoever whoever currently owns 3D Realms is funding it. But yeah, gotcha. it's 3D okay. Realms. I believe it's the same people that did... Um, oh, no, no, that was Flying Pig. Never mind. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of uh, the new um, Shadow Warrior, hmm. which was really good. But I thought it was by the same studio, but maybe not now that I'm thinking of it. I don't think it is. Yeah. Speaking of Gearbox, Battleborn's coming out this year. That's true. Um, one game less. I'm keeping an eye on, but I've never really cared for that style of game. Yeah. So... It's kind of my problem, too, is I'm not really a big fan of that style, mm-hmm. um, but it is definitely a big release. I'm a fan of Gearbox, so I'll probably, I'll probably take a look at it just to sort of like give a nod to the local guys. Yeah, so I hear that. Cool. So I guess we ought to wrap it up, huh? Yep. yep. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for episode 56 of the BackwardCompatible.com podcast. And you're going to hear me talk about it again here in a minute, but we want to remind you that we are uh, in this new season three, as we're calling it, um, taking your suggestions for games we ought to play, topics we ought to talk about. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like answered, you can uh, target it one of us, you can target it all of us, um, and we'd be happy to sort of talk about what it is you want us to talk about. And that's going to be kind of a thing we do moving forward. So uh, thank you again, everyone, for listening. I'm Chris. I'm Jim. And I'm Doc. I'm Brad. And we'll see you next time. We want to join your discussion because dialogue makes everyone better. Want to hear our thoughts on a particular game or topic? Get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, or at our website, backward-compatible.com. And we might feature your question on a future episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible. Backward Compatible.